Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be a book haul. So most of these are actually from a book outlet order that I placed like way back in March and they've just been kind of sitting around waiting for me to film something. So I figured, you know, like I may as well do one. In terms of like exciting personal things that have happened, uh, I passed my prelim exam this week. So, you know, that was awesome. That's kind of a big step forward. So I feel so much better right now. <laughs> so, you know, definitely nice. But anyway, like I said, most of these are a book outlet order. I did receive some books for review as well as some giveaways that I had won and then just like a, another small book order that I had placed. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and start with the books that I received for review, I think. First one that I'll talk about is Lion Cub by J.P. Harkers. This is book three in the, the Caledon saga, obviously. So I'm going to be reading this with Kat from Bruising and Reviews and we're like almost 500 pages into it. So uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's really great. Today's chapters, I read it, we read it and we're both like, oh my God, what just happened? I just flabbergasted really. Um, so this is obviously the third book uh, that follows Wildcat and Leaping Wolf. And this is kind of like a historical fantasy. That here we're following the son of our main character, Rhea, from the previous books. He's been living among the Gaians and um, things are interesting in that culture, shall we say. We also follow a new character, Marion. And she's like one of the members of one of the tribes that make up this Caledon group. And she seems pretty awesome so far. I really like her. But uh, yeah, this is a really fantastic historical fantasy series. And um, given how this is going so far, I just like, I, I need to find out what happens next. This is just so fantastic. And I mean, it's, this is just such a great series to buddy read and we're having such a wonderful time. <laughs> The next book that I received for review is Moon Deeds by Palmer Pickering. So I've actually already read this and my review is up on Goodreads. So, you know, like I'll talk about it in my end of the month wrap up um, for whatever month this is, April. <laughs> but I figured I would just go ahead and mention it here. Um, obviously, like I'll talk about it more in detail, but basically it's kind of a blend of sci-fi and fantasy set on Earth and on the moon. It takes place, starts off in uh, 2090. So we've kind of got like a little bit of urban fantasy, I guess, with that. And then, you know, we have magic, but we also have alien races and technology and space travel and stuff. So we basically follow a set of twins and they are the like prophecy star children, essentially. And they're supposed to reconnect with the source of life. Uh, they have to kind of deal with the struggles both on earth and on the moon. And yeah, like I, I definitely enjoyed my time with it and I will talk about it more in detail soon. <laughs> so then I won, it looks like I think three giveaways. The first of these is uh, Cry of Metal and Bone by L. Penelope. So this is the third book in these Earth, the Earth Singer Chronicles and I have read um, the first book, Song of Blood and Stone, semi recently and I liked it. I think I gave it like three stars, but it wasn't the most, it was a little predictable from what I remember. Um, but I did win this. So like, obviously I'm going to read it and hopefully I think the, the books in this series follow different sets of main characters. So I'm hoping that I don't really need to read book two before getting into book three, but we'll find out. Basically we have two different nations and there was like a magical, mantle kind of separating one of them. While the war may be over, peace is still elusive and there's kind of some conflict between these these people of the, of the two different nations. Um, and it looks like we've got a shadowy group with ties to the government um, attacking s some people. Um, and then we've got like a crew of, of people trying to investigate this attack. But yeah, so we've got, it's like uh, deadly magic, secret agendas and court intrigue. Um, and they're trying to discover who's responsible for a bombing before the next attack. So, yeah, I mean, I like I did like the first book. It you know even if it wasn't like a five star read for me, I still did enjoy it. So I'm curious to see how this goes and if it seems to improve upon the first book. The next book that I want in a Goodreads giveaway is Trouble the Saints by Elia John Johnson. So this comes out. It says in June. I don't know if that's been delayed or not. Um, basically, it's like the dangerous magic of the Night Circus meets the powerful historical exploration of the Underground Railroad in this uh, timely and captivating novel set against the, the darkly glamorous backdrop of New York City where an assassin falls in love and tries to fight her fate at the dawn of World War II. 
we follow a young woman from Harlem who is drawn into the glittering underworld of Manhattan, and I guess she's an assassin. And so then I guess we follow this woman maybe 10 years later who has kind of like given up everything, so perhaps her assassin past and uh, the guy that she loved and also her own dreams and it's like goes from her past her always by her side and then she's being threatened I think so she's gonna have to make a choice and um, it's like is there enough blood in the world to wash clean generations of injustice so that sounds pretty awesome um, I think this is kind of like a it seems to me like a historical urban fantasy the last of the books that I wanted to give away I actually wanted this in a giveaway from book riot I think and so this is mermaid moon by Suzanne Kogel I think um, so this is, we follow a mermaid, and uh, I guess she's only half mermaid, perhaps? It's like her mother was landish, not sea-vish. Oh, okay, wow. So we have an undersea witch who, like, was, I guess, the midwife or whatever at her birth, and she cast a spell that made her people and her mother actually forget her birth, and so she's wanting to find her, her mother, um, and so she's, like, this seems to be maybe kind of reminiscent of uh, Little Mermaid. She's trying to get a, a pair of legs to go onto the islands uh, to try to find her mother. And it's like, she stumbles into a wall of white roses and a community desperate for a miracle and into a baroness who would do anything to live forever. Ooh, that kind of sounds like, um, like, oh God, what's her name? Elizabeth Bathory, um, if I'm remembering that right, like the blood countess. I don't know, I could be just completely making that up, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. And this is a super cool cover, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to check this one out. Hopefully, you know, I like the combination of, of all these like fairy tale elements and, you know, mermaids and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. I think this is already out. Yeah. So then let's get into the non-book outlet part of this. So the first one I'll talk about is The Loop by Ben Oliver. So Elise from Elise Reads and Speaks was so kind to send me her arc of this. Um, which was re just really awesome. But yeah, so basically this is kind of like a sci-fi thriller. I think it's like prisoners on death row are kept in this loop situation. And basically I think what happens is that um, you can postpone your death date by opting into medical experiments. And basically things have started going wrong here. It's like the government issued rain stuff falling, strange things are happening to the prisoners. The warden is telling our main character that he needs to get out. Um, you know, and he's trying to like save the ones he loves, and you know, there's there's clearly something happen happening in the outside world. So, uh, yeah, I mentioned this in my April releases video, I think. So I'm super excited that police sent me this, so I can read it pretty soon. The next book I'll talk about is A Spark of White Fire by oh, I should have looked that up, Sengu Mandana, I think. This is like like a sci-fi, I think, retelling of um, like Indian folklore. And so it's like our main character wins a contest of skill and sets off events that trigger an inevitable and unwinnable war that pits her against the family she'd give anything to return to. So we've got gods, moons, kingdoms and on the backs of starships, a cursed queen, a, a jealous uncle who's stealing the throne from his nephew, and an exiled prince who's trying to get his crown back. Our main character has been raised alone and far away from her home, and then I guess we have like some king offering to gift a sentient warship to a warrior who can win his competition. So she's trying to do this and like help her brother win back the crown. So that sounds super cool. Um, I think Amber from Books of Amber and I may buddy read this in May. <laughs> like trying to remember what month we're in. Uh, it's a struggle. Um, but anyway, I've, I've heard really great things about this and we all know how much I love any sort of retelling. So I think this is going to be fantastic. The next book I'll talk about is The Secret Chapter by Genevieve Cogman. So I think this is book six in the um, Invisible Library series. So <laughs> I, I did actually get the UK cover of this because, I mean, which is like a little, I don't know, I, I feel kind of conflicted about it now because like the dimensions aren't the same so they don't match up. But this cover was so much, so much cooler than the US edition because like obviously we have, you know, this octopus situation going on here and then like the cover is just so much brighter um, than the U.S. edition. Like the U.S. edition is okay. It's kind of just a kind of like meh yellow color with a shark on it. Um, and I thought this was just cool. Anyway, that's that is not at all the point. So <laughs> the Invisible Library series I've talked about before on my channel, but um, this is kind of an urban fantasy where we have it's a lot of like fey versus dragons, and there's this like library that is trying to track down a unique written works from uh, a variety of like alternate worlds and you know so 
if Charles Dickens wrote a particular book in, in one world but not in another, they would they would need to go collect that. All of our main characters, Irene and Kai, as they go through this world, um, and Irene is, I think, trying to save the world that she grew up in. And basically, they, there's like a Caribbean setting, and they're trying to get this book back, but they have to steal a painting from 21st century Vienna. So we're going to, this is like a, we're joining up with people for a heist, and it's like someone will kill to protect this painting, which hides an extraordinary secret from a past age. So yeah, I mean, I love this series. I'm very excited that I have this. Uh, I still have to read the one before it, but you know, now I can just kind of do a little mini binge of these two books. The next book I'll talk about is Crush the King by Jennifer Estep. So this is the third in this Crown of Shards series. And I think um, she said that she's going to write another series in this world following a different character. Um, but basically, our main character, Evie, has survived this like mass murder of her her family. With her family being killed off, Evie was like obviously bumped up in line for the royal succession, and then she had she escaped and joined up with like a gladiator troop essentially, and was trying to kill the queen. So that's the first book. So in this one, let's see here. Oh yes, that's right. Um, we've got these regalia games. So kind of what I assume to be the this like fantasy Olympics because we've got warriors, nobles, and royals from all the kingdoms coming together to compete in various sports events. She's like kind of going on the attack at these sporting events, but things don't go well. And so she's having to face a new threat and learn more about her magic and like secure the throne and crush the king. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is a really fantastic fantasy romance series, I would say. Uh, I just really loved it and I'm very excited to, but also like kind of sad too, to finish the series. So yeah, I'm glad that she's writing more books in this world though. The next book I'll talk about is Storm Song by C.L. Polk. So this is the kind of companion novel, I think, to Witchmark, which I read last year, I think, and really loved. It kind of has like a historical urban fantasy type feel to it, I think. So we follow the sister of the main character from the first book. She has magical abilities and I think can kind of control the weather if I'm remembering that right. Um, so we've got in this this country is like the power is out in the dead of winter and we've got a whole bunch of winter storms on the horizon so you know the the country's not going to be doing all that well so uh she's trying to guide her people to safety but then we have a hostile queen and a ring of rogue mages standing in the way and this may be a female female romance i'm not entirely sure it's talking about um, a photo journal, a female photojournalist, uh, getting closer to secrets that will topple the nation and getting closer to our main character's heart. So, um, yeah, I really loved Witchmark, so I'm super excited to pick this one up and return to the, that world. The next book, a really graphic novel that I'll talk about, is Injustice 2, Volume 3. Um, so this is, again, kind of that alternate world, and I can't remember exactly what the difference was between Injustice 2 and Injustice, other than they're like, loosely coinciding with the games. Uh, but generally speaking, it's uh, the Joker kind of like orchestrates um, the murder of Lois Lane by Superman and kind of destroys Metropolis and Superman kind of goes off the deep end. So I think this is mostly focused on Wonder, Wonder Woman and Supergirl. Um, I really liked the previous two volumes of this that I had read. So I think we actually got this from our local like game and comic book store. They've been doing online ordering and we definitely want to keep them in business. So, so now we get into the book outlet part of this. So the first book I'll talk about here is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rudderson. So I read um, Sorcery of Thorns maybe last year? I can't remember. Um, but I really enjoyed that and I've been kind of meaning to pick this this other book by her up and see how that goes. I think this one doesn't get as high reviews as Sorcery of Thorns, but I think it still sounds very interesting. So our main character, Isabel, is a portrait artist and she's painting for the Fae, essentially, and so she is hired to paint the Autumn Prince, but she paints mortal sorrow in his eyes, which is a weakness that could cost him his life. Um, so he's like super pissed about this and like brings her... I, to the, the to fairy, I guess, to stand trial for her crime. Um, something is, is amiss in this world and they're like attacked from every, every side and they have to like kind of bond together in order to survive. The next book I'll talk about is Pitch Dark by Courtney Alameda. So like, this is a super cool cover. And this is, I think is like a sci-fi horror type book. So we have our one group of characters who are, have been in stasis aboard um, a, a spaceship and they have a chunk of earth which is apparently the last hope for the failing human race. And then we have 
another character who's a ship raider. She finds this ship and they're like, assuming that human civilization is, is saved. Our two main characters meet up. They have to outwit their enemies, evade brutal monsters that kill with sound, and work together to save the ship and the whole human race. So I mostly just remember seeing things about the monsters. Yeah, it's like the somebody, or the, one of the quotes on the back is like something about creating hideous creatures that are the stuff of nightmares. Um, so yeah, sci-fi horror is definitely something that I really enjoy. So I think, you know, I, I thought this looked really interesting, so hopefully it's good. <laughs> the next book I'll talk about is Unearthly by Cynthia Hand. So this is, I think, the first in a trilogy, and our main character finds out she's part angel, I guess, and has some sort of purpose, and is having visions of a, a fire and a mysterious boy. I think it's a lot about destiny. That's basically all I know about this. I have read a couple of books now by Cynthia Hand and have really enjoyed her writing, so I had wanted to try out some of her other books as well, and this trilogy seems to get pretty high reviews, so figured why not. I, the next book I'll talk about is An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Howard. So I've been meaning to read this book for years now, and I've finally went ahead and picked up a copy. So this is, I think, an urban fantasy um, set in yeah New York City, and it's a magical revenge thriller. So we've got this um, unseen world of wealthy and powerful magicians in New York that are um, kind of, I guess, every 20 years they, they're vying for power, and um, the heads of these magical houses elect a champion, and they have some sort of duels. Uh, but apparently this time it's um, this this turning event is only is coming around after 13 years instead of 20, and oh, we have Merlin Ian Merlin, who's the heir to the most powerful house in the unseen world. Uh, so he has been elected to become the champion of his father's chief rival house, I guess. And then we have our main character, who's an unknown magician from a candidate house, and she's kind of an outsider, um, but she has you know per, she's a pretty skilled duelist i think so and is seeking revenge or something so um yeah this sounds really exciting uh you know we all know how much i like urban fantasy so i'm excited to finally read it <laughs> the next book we'll talk about is honor bound by rachel kane and Anne agira so this is the second book um in this series i don't know what the series is called but the first book was honor among thieves so in this one it's, it's been a little bit since I read it. We mostly follow uh, Z Zara, Zara, who is a thief, and she's been recruited into this these honors, which is an elite team of uh, humans selected by the Leviathan, which is a race of sentient alien ships to explore the outer reaches of the universe as their passengers. Um, so she's assigned to this ship with another another honor, yet nothing, not even her honors training or street smarts could have prepared her for the dark ominous truths that lurk behind the alluring glitter of starlight. So that was this one. So now honor bound. Basically we we learned some things in the first book and I think we're kind of like <laughs> recovering from that and so they're seeking some sort of safe haven trying to avoid the creatures that want to annihilate them. So they're going to an outpost that seems to be uh, a congregating place for alien criminals, and so our main character Zara is probably going to have some skills of, of use here. And he's going to have to make a choice to stand, either stand against the ultimate evil or run from it. But she's never walked away from a fight. Um, so I feel like this actually, I mean, at least the first book, they, they kind of remind me of Skyward and Starsight because I, I feel like it's just a general same sort of feel. Like we have some sassy main characters, uh, we have kind of like a sentient ship of sorts. Um, I feel like there's a lot of snark and yeah. So I feel like if you liked Skyward and Starsight, you may also like this series. Um, you know, I certainly really enjoyed Honor Among Thieves, so I'm definitely looking forward to continuing this. I believe this is a trilogy and the third book came out earlier this year. The next book I'll talk about is Borderline by Michelle Baker. So this is an urban fantasy series, and it's the first book in this Arcadia Project series, which I'm not sure how many books that is, maybe a trilogy. So this is one that I remember seeing it when it first came out, and I like had picked it up multiple times, and I was like, ah, I don't know if I, should, I, like, I would like this. Um, but then I saw it in Book Outlet, and I was like, okay, I should, I should give it a shot. You know, some, some of the people I'm friends with on here gave it some pretty good reviews, I think, so, you know, why not? 
So we follow Millie, I think, a year after she lost her legs and her career in a failed suicide attempt. So I think we've got some possible content warnings here. Uh, so she gets a second chance with this Arcadia Project, which is a secret organization that polices t traffic to and from a parallel reality filled with creatures straight out of myths and fairy tales. So yeah, obviously that, that sounds like something I would enjoy. She has to track down a missing movie star who is a nobleman at the Sealy Court. So we've got certainly some fey creatures and... So she's going to deal with uh, a lot of people in Hollywood. And I think a lot of these, it sounds like a lot of these people in Hollywood are actually like fae beings. So there's some sort of conspiracy behind there and some sort of like, basically if she doesn't solve this disappearance, uh, she's going to be out on the streets and there's some sort of possible shattering of a centuries old peace that could, you know, spark an all out war between worlds. So certainly some, some high pressure moments here, but um, yeah, that sounds like a fun urban fantasy that I would enjoy, so I'm excited to finally give it a shot. Next book I'll talk about is The Deceivers by Kristen Simmons. So this one I heard about from Bethany, from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. And basically we have this like veil hall, which is kind of like an elite school of sorts, and uh, essentially I think what happens is this school is full of like con men. Um, so the director of this veil hall wants our main character to put her conning skills to use on much bigger, riskier targets. She's going to be graded on how well she can execute classic hustles and deceptions. She's been assigned to con a senator's son for her semester project, um, but obviously he's going to be hiding something of, of some sort. And it's like, she has going to have to decide how far she's willing to go to get what she wants and how much of her true self she's willing to risk. Um, so that sounded kind of entertaining. It's, yeah, like literally just a school for con artists. Hopefully I'll enjoy it. I think the second book just recently came out and they had like redesigned the covers from what I remember. I think this is the original cover. So the next book I'll talk about is The Triumphant by Leslie Livingston. So this is the third book in this um, Valiant series, I think, which they're kind of covered up with this octopus, but they're right there. Um, but basically it's like a historical fantasy series um, and we follow a, oh my God, this is signed. <gasps> That's so cool. Okay, I didn't know that, but that just made my day. Okay, that was awesome. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. This is a historical fantasy series, and we follow our main character, who is like a Celtic warrior, and she, I think, ends up being like kidnapped and sold as a slave, and then ends up being a gladiator. So the, we have, and, and like taken to Rome. So Caesar and Cleopatra make an appearance. Um, so this is the third book, so, you know, like, let's try to minimize spoilers here. So we've got some treachery in Rome, and she's going to be fighting, I think, for the freedom of someone she cares about. And the Republic is tearing itself apart at the seams, and there's a lot of chaos. Um, Cleopatra is back. I feel like in the second book there was something to do with the Amazon, so I don't know if they're going to come back or not. Um, but yeah, I've, I really enjoyed this series, and I'm excited to finally finish it. The next book I'll talk about is The Wolf's Call by Anthony Ryan. So this is like a follow-up series to Raven's Shadow series. Okay, so so the first book in that series was Blood Song, and we follow Valen Al Sorna. It's like a school setting, and he learns how to be a warrior and, and things like that. And it's been a long time since I've read those, but I seem to remember I mean, Blood Song is really good, and then the the second and third books weren't nearly as good. But I've heard that this one kind of like returns to the same form as Blood Song. So we follow oh yeah and i think it's kind of like a similar vibe as uh king killer chronicles where we have like somebody recounting his life um so we follow valen al sorna and it's like you know his leadership overthrew empires so he's kind of i think retired almost <laughs> to the northern reaches but we have rumors of an army called the steel horde who is led by somebody who thinks he's a god valen learns that uh somebody he used to be very close with has been um, it was like has fallen into the horde, horde's grasp, so he's going to confront this threat. So we're, I think we're going to be traveling to fight, and he's going to be learning that there are some battles that he may not be strong enough to win. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this, this goes. It's kind of an epic high fantasy sort of thing, and lots of battles. The next book I'll talk about is Binti, The Complete Trilogy by Nydia Korfor. So I've actually read the first of the Binti novellas, and this is a bind up of the three novellas plus a brand new Binti story. So yeah, I, you know, I'd been wanting to continue the series and I had seen that this came out 
sometime last year, I think, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I can't really resist the urge to get a complete bind up with a new story. So <laughs> yeah, so this is a sci-fi series where we follow Binti, um, who is very like talented with math and she has been offered uh, like the chance to attend this really prestigious university, but she comes from a background kind of where this isn't really encouraged as much. And then we've got like a jellyfish like alien species and they attack her spaceship and she's the only survivor. There's more to the history of this alien race than meets the eye. So she's trying to save the planet where this university is at. And so she's trying to like broker a peace between these peoples. And I think at some point she goes back home to test the strength of the fragile piece she worked so hard to win. Um, yeah, so I really liked, like I said, I really liked Benty, like the first novella, and I'm excited to continue her story. I, I do feel like reading it in this bind up, it might be better because, you know, like at the, it, it, it did feel a little short and I was like, oh, I want to keep reading. So, you know, now I, I have the chance to just like read them all. All right, the last book I'll talk about today is The Cold Is In Her Bones by Pernell Van Arsdale. So I think this is loosely a retelling of Medusa. So we have, and I've heard kind of like mostly positive, but kind of mixed reviews, I think, for this. Nilla, our main character, is never allowed to travel the village, and so she's only friends, I guess, with her brother. But then we have um, a new girl who comes to stay with her family, and basically she, this girl has a secret she's forbidden to share. The village is cursed by a demon who possesses girls at random, and everybody is like terrified about who it's going to be coming for next. Um, so the demon has come for this girl, and she's captured and imprisoned with other possessed girls, so our main character is trying to, like, break this curse. Um, but, but, she has a secret of her own. She's changing and may soon be a demon herself. So, yeah. Again, retellings, um, I think, I've never really read anything about a retelling with Medusa, so I'm curious to see how this goes. You know, I, I <laughs> realized I had said that, like, I was trying to not buy books, and, like, for the most part, I've done pretty well. You know, most of these books were this book outlet order that I did place, like, way back in March, so they've just been kind of sitting around. Um, been trying to make progress on my TBR pile, so let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. I think for your question of the day, let's say, have you read many sci-fi horror books? And if so, what are they? Because I'm always on the lookout for more of those. <laughs> that seems to be kind of an, an area of horror that I really enjoy. I hope you're having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.